I do a series where I tell you the best reptiles for certain size enclosures, but what about certain size dwellings? What if you live in an apartment or a dorm and you don't really have this much space as a full house? Well, today I'm gonna to tell you the top five reptiles that would work perfect in a dormitory or an apartment. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. <laughs> The idea here is size is what's most important, but not only size, but things like what you feed it are things gonna get out. For example, dart frogs won't make it on the list, although they're great for small spaces. The fruit flies get everywhere, no matter what you do, and maybe in a dorm or a shared living space or an apartment where they can get through the vents, that might not be the best option for you. So that's why we're picking the animals that we're picking. Let's just get right into it. Number five, an animal we don't talk enough about on this channel, garter snakes. I think if you want a snake, something like a ball python could definitely work, but you were gonna rule out berms and boas and things like that. So why not a small colubrid that might be actually very interesting for everybody else to look at too? In general, if you have a dorm, unless you have a policy where you're allowed to have certain size pets, which I would recommend, you're probably gonna be sneaking your pet in there. I don't condone this. I'm not saying you should sneak your pet into a dorm. I'm not saying that at all. I also know that uh, just because I say that you shouldn't doesn't mean that you won't. Now, garter snakes are quiet. They're not gonna make any noise except for rustling through the leaves, branches, things like that inside their enclosure. They don't really smell because in captivity, they're not gonna musk on you most likely and their food sources are easy to hide. What I mean, in captivity, depending on the species of garter snake, so do your research first. This doesn't work for every single species. In general, garter snakes are gonna eat a varied diet. Maybe things like tilapia that you've frozen and then thawed or frog legs, or there's a multitude of things that are frozen that you could feed them that would work in your freezer and doesn't look like a mouse. Now, of course, if your thing is, I want a different type of snake and I, I want frozen mice and frozen rodents, just put them in a paper towel and then freeze them and no one's gonna notice what it is. They're gonna think it's chicken or something else, but I understand in shared living spaces, it might be difficult to have rodents in your freezer. Or this works too if you live at mom's place because maybe mom doesn't want that either. Now, most garter snakes don't get much bigger than three or four feet. Of course, again, it depends on the species and there are so many laws. For example, we were just allowed to have Eastern garter snakes here in Ontario as of last week. So you have to, you have to have a small hunting, small game hunting license. Anyway, so what I'm trying to say here is you have certain type of laws. So check your bylaws. San Francisco garter snakes, for example, in Canada are plentiful. We have them, they're pretty cheap. In the US, best of luck. And pick an appropriately sized tank. So if you get something that gets to three feet, you could probably have a 75 gallon enclosure. And because these animals in the most part like things like water areas, and they like to bask and they're diurnal, they're gonna be really fun for you to watch and anyone in your living space that's okay with snakes. Again, make sure if this is a shared living space, I know that apartments and dorms aren't always shared, but if they are, make sure everyone in the household is cool with you having a snake or a reptile because the last thing you want is to get an animal and then have to get rid of it or get an animal and then you come home one day and it's just gone or your roommate hates you. Yeah, don't do that. Either way, no smell. Very little mess. I mean, oh, of course, if you don't clean the poop, it'll smell, but I'm assuming that you're gonna take care of these animals properly. And they're really not that scary in terms of reptiles for people who aren't initiated. They look cute even to the layman. So anyway, let's move on. Number four, mountain horn dragons. Oh boy, I'm excited to talk about them. This is an animal that if you hit subscribe, you will see on this channel. I got to go to Fadi's house, Daffy's Reptiles. There's a link in the description. Check his channel out. I absolutely love it. He's got a bunch of mountain horn dragons. And then last week or two weeks ago, or whenever this video comes out, I got to go to Thailand and I got to see all sorts of different mountain horn dragons and different species that are very similar. But either way, I think they're super cool. Now, the reason I think they work well in dorms and places like that is because they don't take up a big footprint. We're talking about it 
tall enclosure, not a long enclosure. So something that might be 18 by 18 by 36, or maybe 24 by, it depends, right? Do your research depending on the species. And there's a bunch of different species. They all get different sizes depending on which one you choose. Depending on the species, eight to 15 inches is what we're talking about here. So smaller than a beardy by far, and they're going to need room up in the canopy or up in trees or branches, because that's where you're gonna find them. Now, in my personal observation, all the mountain horn dragons we found were about two feet off of the ground out in the wild, and they're always around moving water. The thing with these animals is they don't see standing water. So you do need a water area, so a paludarium works great, but that water has to be moving because they don't see it standing. So they can fall into it and maybe even drown, but definitely they're not gonna go in there for a drink because they don't even know it's there. Very weird eyes, their eyes barely work, like me. We're kind of meant to be, me and mountain horn dragons. Now these guys can be and should be captive bred when you buy them. Don't buy imports. My recommendation, you're gonna have a better time with no parasites, first of all, and a much more placid animal that is more likely to jump on your shoulder or jump on your head. And this is what you want, a handleable animal that's gonna come out, going to enjoy you, and unlike some animals that do jump, because these guys do jump, they're not going to be quite as unpredictable. So in my experience, in my opinion, I think, these guys are just a little bit more predictable, and I like our boreal animals that are less bitey, less flighty, and of course they eat insects, but, <sighs> I can't, I know that insects, they can get out in your house and stuff, and maybe that's not good for smaller spaces. I just can't take points away from them. I think they are really, really cool. Mountain horn dragons are severely underrated. I can't wait to get a pair of my own, but until then, let's just move on to number three. Number three, rubber boas. Remember when we used to talk about rubber boas a whole bunch, and then we don't now? We should. Now, rubber boas are one of two species of boa that are in North America, naturally, of course. So. Uh, I guess the southern port of Mexico, there's technically BCIs, but anyway, there's two in North America, Canada and the US and most of Mexico, and those are the rosy boa, and then up here in Canada and US, we have rubber boas. Now these like it very, very cool in comparison to most other species of snake. In fact, there are pictures you can find on the internet of these guys basking next to mounds of snow. These guys like it cool. And for that reason, I think that if you don't wanna heat up your apartment or heat up a small space, especially if you live in, I don't know, Southern California and maybe you don't have air conditioning, the last thing that you're gonna want in your small apartment or small dorm is more light heating up the place. With these boas, you're gonna have more of an issue keeping them cool than keeping them warm. Same reason why I didn't put axolotls on the list because they like it even cooler and best of luck doing that in small spaces. Now these animals are smaller than three feet always. They are really, really small in terms of boas and they have kind of a uh, knob on the end of their tail that looks like a head. So they will go in the wild into a mouse nest, the mother will, and she'll eat these mice one at a time as she's fighting off the mother mouse with her tail. So in the wild, you'll always see these guys with lacerations on their tails because they're acting as if that's the head while they're doing the eating or whatever they're doing with their actual head. Very interesting form of mimicry with their tail. Now this doesn't matter to you. What matters to you is they don't eat all that often for a small snake. Generally, the bigger the snake, the less they eat. But these guys eat quite a bit less than say colubrids of the similar size because they have very low metabolisms because they have very low temperatures in comparison to most snakes. So. If you're going to feed and you can't keep rodents in your freezer, which is what they eat by the way, you could maybe go to the store every time you need to get a feeder. But it's mostly a pain in the butt because if it's say once a week with a corn snake or something like that, a hog nose snake, whatever, it's just maybe a little bit too much driving or commuting or whatever. These guys, they're gonna eat less. So you need to go to the reptile store less. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Number two, you know I can't do a list without ruining it with a frog or amphibian. We will, white's tree frogs. Now I will make mention that females for the most part don't call, which is why I'm suggesting female white's tree frogs. Now they can call very uh, infrequently. And if you get a male, he's gonna call and it's gonna be loud. If you've watched these videos, they're right behind me. Sometimes they'll call and I have to wait because I can't talk over them, they're loud. But if you get a female, these guys can cohabitate several females together, even males 
do your research first. Don't just go ahead and throw a bunch of frogs together. Now, in terms of enclosure size, again, very similar to a mountain horn dragon. They like it tall rather than wide. So give them enough space, do your research first. We're doing a White's Care Guide very soon. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It's coming up, I think, in December. So if you get one of these animals, know that they do feed on insects, but they are going to eat crazily, vivaciously, whatever the adjective I'm looking for. The way they eat is super duper interesting and that's why I love to keep them. So these guys are going to be moving around the enclosure. They're not just gonna stand there. They're not just gonna be still. I just think that they're amazing. They are from Australia. They're sometimes called dumpy tree frogs or Australian tree frogs or Australia white tree frogs. Either way, they are uh, very big. If you want a smaller one, maybe red-eyed tree frogs would work here. But either way, I love these frogs. They're one of my favorites. I'll always have them. Let's move on to number one. And number one is crested geckos. Now I know crested geckos are kind of boring. Everybody has them. But at the end of the day, is there an easier animal on the planet to care for besides a sea monkey? Probably not. Here's why. If you have say a pair or just one, you can get away with an 18 by 18 by 18. So it literally takes 18, so a foot and a half of square space and then two feet of vertical space. This thing takes almost no space at all. And that is, some people would say I'm even saying it's too big, right? Because a lot of people will keep them in a 12 by 12 by 18. Don't do that, 18 by 18 by 12. Okay, we're getting to the nuts and bolts. Care guide right here if you wanna know more. Either way, they're going to be rather small. They're say a medium sized gecko, but small for an animal. So if you wanna handle them, they're very handleable. You can take them out. If you look at them, they're not scary, even to people who might be scared of reptiles. Overall, amazing animals. I absolutely love these guys. And I mean, they're just so freaking cute. They're so cute. And talking about feeding, they don't need live insects. Well, they do need live insects occasionally, but the bulk of their diet is gonna be a prepared diet. So in the fridge, you put your Apache, Clark's, Pangea, whatever brand that is that you wanna use, and then you go ahead and mix it up in a cup with water, and then you serve it to them every other day. That's it. And then maybe once every two weeks, drop in some insects, but it's not really a lot. So overall, I just think that they're the easiest on the planet to care for when it comes to pet lizards and they're small, and they don't smell, and they don't make a noise, and everybody loves them. Crested geckos are freaking awesome. That's it. What do you think? Are there five more? Should we do a part two? What should be in that video? Let me know in the comment section below. Please hit that like and subscribe, really helps. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking awesome. We just got back from Asia, Dave Kaufman and I, and we did a whole bunch of videos and a whole bunch of content that's only available there. There's a big upgrade in the corner there that's only available on Patreon if you wanna know what's in there. We got a dreams, okay, there's just so much, including discounts on merch for as little as a dollar a month. That's it, because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. That means I'll see you in the next one.